Remember when? On a hot summer's day, waiting for the ice cream truck to arrive in your neighborhood. Well, this is the story of Harry Burt and the Good Humor Ice Cream Company. The Good Humor Company was founded in 1920 in Youngstown, Ohio, when Harry Burt, a confectioner, created a chocolate coating that was compatible with ice cream. Harry's daughter, Ruth, she tried the chocolate treat and her comment was, Ew, it's too messy. Jolly Boy Suckers on a Stick, another of Harry's creations, provided the answer to the messy problem. Simply freeze the stick into a bar of ice cream. Then coat it with Harry's special chocolate coating. Presto! The Good Humor Bar is ready for market. Bert was happy for a while selling his Good Humor Bar in his store. But that was not enough, so he thought of another way. Instead of waiting for the people to come to his store, he would go to the people. Bert had the idea to outfit a fleet of 12 street vending trucks with freezer units. To attract people's attention to his ice cream trucks, he called them sales cars back then. Well, to attract the attention, he used bells on his trucks. Male vendors were used to sell the ice cream, and soon the public were calling the men the Good Humor Man. Bert's first fleet of trucks were Ford Model T trucks, well, sales cars as they were called then, the Hackney Brothers, they provided and installed all the proper equipment for the delivery of ice cream. The bells that Harry first used to attract his customers came from his son's bobsled. The first good humor trucks were a success, and they led to an even bigger fleet. Good humor bars have since been sold in everything from tricycles to push carts to trucks and grocery stores. To protect his inventions in the ice cream industry, Harry felt he needed to obtain patents. In January of 1922, Bert applied for patents, which were not granted until October of 1923. This is because the patent office thought Good Humor's ice cream bars were too similar to Eskimo pies. The patents were granted only when Burt Jr. traveled all the way out to Washington, D.C. with samples to demonstrate the difference. When the patents were granted, the good humor patents were for the equipment and the process to manufacture frozen novelties on a stick, but not for the product itself. Moving ahead to 1925, the ice cream industry introduced the first successful mechanically refrigerated trucks. Frederick McKinley Jones was the inventor of the refrigeration unit that was used. I might add that Mr. Jones invented the first portable refrigeration unit ever. With his innovations, mobile refrigeration was improved for the long and short distance transport of ice cream medical supplies, food, and other perishable goods. Good Humor started to put these mobile refrigeration units to work on its fleet of trucks. By now, the sales car name was dropped and the name Good Humor Truck became commonly used. Things were moving along quite nicely for Good Humor until 1976, when the rising cost in operating the ice cream trucks made profitability unattainable. Therefore, Good Humor sold its fleet of vehicles and began focusing on selling in grocery stores. The grocery stores offered a new market to Good Humor, so Good Humor continued to develop its product line. In 1992, Good Humor introduced these tasty treats. The classics, Candy Crunch, Chocolate Eclair, Strawberry Shortcake, and 
toasted almond. In 2014, almost a full century after the Good Humor Truck revolutionized the delivery of frozen treats to the people of all ages, Good Humor launched the first ever commercially viable solar-powered freezers in New York City. Harry Burt not only revolutionized the sale of ice cream to the public via mobile ice cream vendors, but with the Hackney Brothers, Harry was the first to use freezer trucks to sell his Good Humor bars. A little about the trucks now. The original Ford Good Humor trucks were owned by the Good Humor Corporation. The first 12 trucks, in fact most all of Good Humor's truck bodies, were built by the Hackney Body Works. Later, the trucks had porcelain sides with the Good Humor logo baked on. The Ford chassis were sent to the Hackney shop who built and installed everything from the windshield back. I'm standing here next to a Sunstar 118th scale Good Humor truck to show off all of its features. It is a 1965 Ford F100 freezer jump truck. The early trucks were plugged into 220 at night and were designed to keep the ice cream frozen for up to two days. The freezer had a compressor mounted where the passenger seat would normally be. There is also an insulated bin with an opening lid where that door would be, and that was for holding and dispensing ice cream treats. And there's the lid. The good humor man, he entered and exited on the curb side of the truck for safety, and there is no door on the driver's side for that reason. Trucks of this style are called hoppers or jump trucks. And they were made until 1969 when Good Humor discontinued this style of truck and went to the step van style of trucks. Since the step van trucks were more efficient and comfortable to work out of. Good Humor trucks were made for one thing and one thing only. And that was selling ice cream. The freezer boxes are very well insulated and designed to last. The freezer box has a very thick insulated door that opens and exquisite graphics on the side. There's also a signboard above advertising the chocolate eclair. There's the signboard and there is the opening door. This truck it rides on vintage steel wheels with chrome hubcaps and soft rubber tires. See them down there? Inside the cab, there's a driver's seat, a steering wheel, and a dashboard. Back here, there is another opening insulated door into the freezer box. There's a license plate and fancy graphics. Also, all of the lights on this truck are of the individual jewel style type. And there is that opening freezer door. On the street side, there are more great graphics advertising ice cream and no opening doors. The fuel filler door is right here, but it doesn't open. If you noticed where the driver's door would be, there is no seam on the back. And that's because these jump trucks didn't have driver's doors for safety. There's also mirrors up here on the cowl so the driver can see behind him, along with a mirror on the front fender so the driver can see close in front to the truck. And there's the mirrors on the cowl, and there is the mirror up front. That's a great little mirror so the driver can see any kids that might run in front of the truck. The front of the truck is a typical 1965 Ford F100 front end. 
it has the Ford letters tampoed and the Ford V8 insignia right there on the hood. It also has the Ford block letters that are cast into the chrome piece between the two turn signals. The grille and the bumper are chrome pieces and the headlights are individual jewel style sealed beams. The windshield wipers are chrome as are the bells that are up above the window. There's also an advertising sign on the top of the cab for good humor. Finally, under the hood, there's a detailed Ford V8 engine, and this model also has a steerable front end. All in all, this is a great model for your collection, if you can find one today. This model brings us back to another time, and to keep that sensation alive, head down to the description below and grab my free report on the Fallen Flags. Also, be sure to go on and hit that like button to tell YouTube to send this video out to more great people. And if you enjoyed this content and want to see more diecast product reviews and histories, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.